So we are starting the session with IOL power calculation for pediatric patients. Uh, with improvement in surgical technique and equipments, uh, the pediatric surgery is becoming uh, easier. And implantation of intraocular lenses in younger children and infants is gaining much wider acceptance throughout the world. But despite a good surgery, uh, subsequently the optimal visual rehabilitation may not, uh, may not be achieved because of the one very important factor and that factor is uh, intraocular lens power calculation. The younger the child, the more difficult is the problem of accurate uh, intraocular lens power calculation. Now there are, uh, during the normal eye development, uh, the actual length of the child increases during first two to three years of life uh, at a very rapid pace and keratometry, uh, which is steeper at the time of birth, that flattens over the next six months to 12 uh, months. Uh, the lens, which is more spherical, that becomes less and less curved and to some extent compensates for uh, rapidly increasing actual length. Now there are uh, various, uh, there are some issues in pediatric uh, IOL power calculation. Now uh, the issues include related to uh, changes in actual length, keratometry, which intraocular lens calculation formula has to be used, at what age the intraocular lens has to be implanted, what should be the target refraction in a child, and what is the myopic shift. We'll take uh, uh, these issues one by one. Uh, as far as actual length is concerned, at birth, the actual length of the child is around 16.6 uh, to 17 millimeter, which increases very rapidly in initial three months to about 18.23 millimeter at about three months. The rate of increase may be as high as 0.15 millimeter per week during this time. The actual length keeps on increasing rapidly till two to three years. And after that, it, the, uh, the increase in uh, actual length that decreases, the rate decreases, but it continues to increase till second decade of life. Now the errors could be because of the uh, uh, rapidly increasing actual length. Uh, the other error could be because of the measurement technique. The uh, eyes in the children, they are much softer. Usually, uh, as far as A scan is concerned, actual length measurement is concerned, the applanation or immersion uh, techniques are used. In applanation, there may be indentation or cornea that can lead to error, or uh, in immersion, uh, since uh, especially in younger children and infants uh, or uncooperative children where examination under anesthesia is being done, the focusing may not be proper and uh, this may also lead to some error. Immersion method is the recommended method for uh, uh, actual length uh, uh, measurement in children as well. The ultrasound velocity, one has to be very sure that what ultrasound velocity uh, is there on the A scan machine. The In fakic patients, uh, you can add a corrected actual length factor of around plus 0.32 millimeter if velocity is set at uh, 1532 meter per second in the uh, A scan machine. Uh, in aphakic patients, uh, the velocity is 1532 meter per second. It should be set at that. Uh, to avoid any error. As far as keratometry is concerned, at the time of birth, the cornea is very steep. The keratometry may be as high as 51.2 diopter at birth. And over the next six months to uh, 12 months, the keratometry, it flattens uh, and it reaches about 43.5 uh, uh, millimeter at around one, uh, around one year of age. Now this is a video showing how to uh, calculate the IOL power uh, in children uh, who are undergoing examination under an anesthesia, a handheld keratometer is being used to calculate the keratometry readings. You should take at least three to five readings, which should be identical, almost identical. And then, uh, like this is taken, then a printout is taken for the keratometry reading. After doing a handheld keratometry, then uh, one has to do the A scan. Again, in the A scan, you wait for at least five near identical readings to be sure that you, uh, there is no uh, grossly uh, 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 the reading which is not uh, out of the uh, which is not uh, which is not true so uh, take at least five readings and then take average of that and uh, then use a particular IOL calculation power formula now what should be the target refraction now we have usually three options either the child may be left uh, uh, very high hypermetropic that is you undercorrect the child uh, or uh, you aim for emetropia uh, or you uh, make it low to moderate hypermetropia for the child. 
Now, these, uh, the target refraction, uh, this depends upon various factors. The factors include these, the listed factors. Um, one of the most important is the age at the time of cataract surgery. Now, uh, in uh, younger patients, uh, I'll, cover, to the, I'll cover, uh, cover up the age uh, in the subsequent slides. Status of the fellow eye is one very important. If other eye is fakic and uh, cataract surgery is being uh, done in this eye, then try to aim as close to the emetropia as possible. Otherwise, there may be very high uh, anisometropic hypermetropia in the child and he may land up with uh, amblyopia. The compliance of the family members of the children should also be taken into consideration, especially if you are leaving some residual refract uh, refractive error which needs correction using spectacles or contact lenses. Similarly, if the child is already uh, developing amblyopia in, uh, in, in the eye, so in that case also aim for emetropia so that even if uh, the compliance is poor on, uh, uh, on the relatives of the child, uh, he may not uh, uh, suffer gross amblyopia subsequently and occlusion therapy should be practiced which will be discussed in subsequent uh, lectures. Now what IL power uh, need to be used? There had been various recommendations over uh, uh, past uh, two or three decades. On the basis of axial length, uh, the Han et al. had uh, suggested use of uh, uh, IL power depending upon the axial length say like 21 millimeter you use a 22 diopter but these are very, these were very generalized subsequently NAD at all recommended uh, uh, based on post uh, operative refractive goal if, you're, uh, if 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 it's a one year old child then you implant a, uh, ref, uh, then have a post operative refractive goal of plus 6 diopter and if it is a two year old child five diopter three year old child four diopter and subsequently Then Lambert et al. in uh, 2001 uh, published uh, some guidelines in the APOS. Now the guidelines they published were in children who are younger than two years, you have these three options. But then you have to consider these options based on the other factors, the status of the other eye, the compliance of the children. You can go for emetropia where uh, the other eye is fakey and the uh, vision is uh, uh, normal and near normal uh, or if the eye which is to be operated has got severe amblyopia. In more than two years, you tend to go to near uh, to emetropia or uh, may have some mild undercorrection. Uh, and in uh, more than four years, aim for emetropia. These were the guidelines which, uh, of APOS in 2001 that they had suggested. Now there was another survey that was a Wilson survey which was carried out in uh, 2001 again from the HCRS and APOS members. They also had suggested that more than two years. Uh, you can aim for emetropia or very, very minimal hypermetropia in the child. Now, uh, which IL calculation formula has to be used? The whatever IL calculation formulas that are available today, they are developed for adult eyes. In children, now which formula to be used? SRKT or Holiday 1, 2, Hoffer, Hoffer Q, there are so many formulas. So, there were some studies, one study by Andrew and co-workers, they found that or all formulas were less than satisfactory for shorter axial length. These formulas are good for axial length when it is more than 20 millimeter, but for shorter axial length, all formulas were equally inaccurate. Hoffer Q, they found, had the lowest uh, error in their study of around 1.4 diopter, and SRK2, they found, had the highest error. Now, similarly, there was another st study by Measure et al., and they found that, again, the same thing, all formulas were less than satisfactory, and none had proven advantage over one another. And there is another survey, Kekunia et al. They found SRK2 had the lowest prediction error. So based on these, either uh, you can use SRK2 or Hoffer Q uh, uh, formula during the intraocular lens power calculation for children. Then a pediatric IL calculator was developed based on Holiday 1 formula. It was designed to calculate post-operative pseudophagic refraction of a child in immediate post, uh, immediate post op period and to pro uh, predict refractive changes as the child grows. It can be downloaded from the site address I had given. Now, uh, there, was, there is one study which uh, by Jasmine et al. They found there was no difference between the SRK2 uh, uh, formula and pediatric cal uh, calculator in prediction error in children. But uh, this is a pediatric calculator where you can feed in all the, uh, the A constant 
and uh, other pre-op refraction and what you desire at uh, uh, two years. So by filling up, you can uh, get the oil power uh, that you want to implant. So another factor is amount of myopic shift. Now this myopic shift occurs uh, because the crystalline lens you have removed, but the child eye is growing. So uh, as the child eye is growing, there occur uh, uh, with the uh, in, with the growth of the child the hypermetropia. If you have, if you have uh, uh, kept the child hypermetropic, then hypermetropia decreases and it shifts towards the myopia. So this myopic shift. What has been found found out that the younger the child, more is the myopic shift. If you see the study by Wilson et al., they had calculated about 6.22 diopter of myopic shift in infants. Uh, by Pleasure et al. had uh, uh, calculated about 4.6 diopter of myopic shift in uh, uh, children between 2 to 3 years of age. And as the age increases, the amount of myopic shift decreases. So uh, to conclude uh, the IL power calculation, more than two, 2 years there is no ambiguity at, at present. But less than two years, there is no consensus. There are many studies which indicate different uh, uh, refract refractive goals and different factors. I think uh, this is because of that there are so many factors which are involved in making a decision for implantation of intraocular lens in a particular child. Based on his visual acuity, based on his uh, family members, their compliance, based on the other status of the other eye. So uh, the IL power calculation for a particular child has to be tailor made for each individual case. With this, I conclude my uh, IL power calculation. Thank, Thank you. you, Dr. Sharma. Uh